And it's an interesting question. Even though we haven't sold any yet, we want to find out how fast we're going to be increasing our, our sales. That's, inter that's weird because we can do that at t equals zero with our derivative. So this happens when t equals zero. How fast will sales increase when the movie in, uh, is, is released? How fast? That relates back to our rate of change. So we've already found the rate of change. This is how fast you're climbing or how fast you're falling. You understand? That's your slope. This is how fast you're doing something. So if this is how fast, and we're asking how fast when t is zero, what do you need to do to figure that question out? Plug in zero. Plug in zero. Yeah, plug in zero. So we actually want to find s prime of zero for this. That will be seven. Minus 7 times 0 squared. All or whatever that is. How much is that going to be ultimately when you get done? 7. 7 or negative 7? 7. 7. So it's climbing. It says positive. 7. And what I'm guessing is this probably is in millions of DVD sales per year. So at this time, their rate is you're increasing at 7 million DVD sales per year. Now, is that a constant? No. This is, no, this is not linear. So in the next moment of time, it's going to be a little bit different. Okay, at t equals 1, it will be, at t equals 1, it's going to be 0, right? If you plug in 1 here, you get, you get 0. That's how, we got the, that's how we get the 1. So it's going to be 0. So the slope is probably, I'm not sure for sure, but the slope is probably decreasing up until that point, and it continues to decrease negatively as you, you fall, your, your sales fall off. But so right the, at the moment when you release it, well, that's when you're going to have the most amount of uh, the quickest sales, the quickest. So you say, okay, we're selling the most for a time. When are they going to peak? Well, they're going to peak after a year. After that, they're going to fall off. Does that make sense to you? Now, there's a couple of things that we have talked about before. I just want to refresh your memory on these. They shouldn't be really anything uh, that you're, you're having to learn new, except for maybe, maybe one of them we're going to talk about marginal cost, which is a really interesting idea. We'll talk about that, but basically this is just integrating, well, not integrating, but uh, combining our idea of a, a derivative with some of these applications. Were there any questions? Hope not. I know. Just a couple ideas here, a squeaky pen. If I give you a position curve, if I give you a position curve, what happens when I take a derivative of my position curve with respect to t. What do I get out of a position curve when I take a derivative? Do you, re do you remember? Acceleration. No, not acceleration, but you're close. Velocity. You get velocity. Remember that the derivative is a rate of change, right? Rate of change will be a velocity. That's the velocity of DVD sales, how, how fast they're climbing or falling. That's what that says to you. So if I take a derivative of my a position curve with respect to t, we've already talked about this before, this is a velocity. So how you find a velocity is by taking a derivative with respect to t, the first derivative. So this is velocity. The next question is, what would happen if I take another derivative? So for instance, uh, let's say, and by the way, you can represent this as s prime of t. That might be a little bit more concise than this ds dt. So we'll, we'll do that and we'll stick with that. Take a derivative of position, you get velocity. What would happen if I took a derivative of velocity? What would happen? 
this is the, if you think about this, this is the rate of change of the rate of change. Or in other words, how the velocity is changing. How the velocity is changing. That's acceleration. That's right. So if you step on your gas pedal faster or like heavy, you're, you're accelerating more, right? Your velocity is still changing, but how you're changing is your acceleration. So this derivative of velocity gives you acceleration, which if you look at it, can you recognize that this is a second derivative of a position function? First derivative is velocity, second derivative <coughs> is acceleration. If I spelled acceleration right, I'm not a good speller. Is that right? Is this right? <laughs> and, uh, I always do the, the extra L. I don't know why. Acceleration just acceleration. Like the board in the video. No, I don't believe it's just like that. <laughs> so acceleration, that's a second derivative. It's how the velocity is changing. What about third derivative? Or the derivative of acceleration. That would be the third derivative of your position. Well, if you think about it, velocity is how your position is changing. Acceleration is how your velocity is changing. This should be how your acceleration is changing. You ever stepped on your gas pedal really hard and have a really nice fast car? And your head goes, <laughs> right? What happens to your head is called the jerk. Your head jerks, right? Jerk, not me. <laughs> I'm a jerk. Uh, but jerk, as far as this goes, it defines how the acceleration is changing. Is that the technical term? Seriously, jerk. Really? Mm -hmm. Really, really. Wow. Really like jerk. Yes. Momentum. <laughs> nope, jerk. Velocity is how position is changing. Acceleration is how velocity is changing. The jerk is how acceleration is changing. If you accelerate and then you change acceleration really quick, you're going to be jerking, aren't you? Yeah. hope so. Once you do acceleration once, jerk. You don't jerk again unless you change acceleration. If you have constant acceleration, you go whoop, and then you stick back there for a while until you stop accelerating. And that's a change in acceleration, isn't it? But if you accelerate and then your turbos kick in, like mine, you go brr, bam, and your head goes brr, brr, twice. It's really cool. You should really try it. Get, get a twin turbo car, and you'll have a lot of fun. You'll probably die younger than you should, but you'll have a lot of fun. Okay, so velocity, acceleration, jerk. Uh, just a quick example. Let's find acceleration and jerk of this position curve. Uh, we could say this is like the position uh, in t seconds. So this could be seconds here. Find velocity. I'm sorry, find acceleration and jerk. Go for it. Find acceleration and jerk. What's it going to take to find acceleration? First, second, third derivative. Which one? For acceleration. For acceleration. Second. What's the first one? Velocity. Okay, what's the what's jerk then? Okay, so if we find all of these derivatives, I know this one is 6t squared, by the way, on your homework. Uh, I passed it out to you, right? Some of you are forgetting your exponents. You're taking stuff like this and giving me 6t. You can't do that. That's going to really affect your problem, especially with acceleration and jerk. And then you take a second derivative, you're way off. So be careful on that. Minus 30t plus 24. So far, so good? Yes, no? Okay, so second derivative. This would be the velocity at any given time. Say how fast you're going? Plug in a number. You can do that. The acceleration will be the next derivative. How fast are you accelerating at any given time? This is going to be 12t minus 30. 
You okay with that so far? Lastly, the, the next derivative, or third derivative, should just be 12. Constant jerk factor. <laughs> That's me, I'm a constant jerk. <laughs> sweat. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But if we found acceleration and jerk, we just need to know that this is velocity, this one's acceleration, and that one is the jerk. So, acceleration, jerk. It'd be quite uninteresting for me to ask you, um, so what's the jerk? at t equals 3, because you say it's constant, right? It's never changing. So from, from when we start, you're always jerking, jerking around the same rate. It's always a factor of 12, or however they, they want to describe that. Uh, acceleration, though, would be interesting. Could I ask you, what's the acceleration when t equals 3? Could you find that out? So acceleration at t equals 3. How would you find it? Yeah, we're going to go back down to this one, s double prime. That is our acceleration. So if we plug in 3, we get 12 times 3 minus 30. Would you say 6? Sure. 6 feet per second squared would be acceleration. Uh, this would be feet per second. Feet per second squared should be feet per second cubed. I think, unless I did my units just wrong right now, but I'm pretty sure that's the, that's how it should be. I believe. I'll check on that for you. Uh, next up, could I ask you this question? When will velocity be zero, or when will acceleration be zero? Could I ask you those things as well? Could you find the time at which those those are possible? Let's do acceleration just for the ease of it. But you should be able to tell me when acceleration is zero. If you set this equal to zero, you can say, oh, I'm not really traveling if this works out, if you can factor it correctly, uh, or use the quadratic equation. You should be able to figure out the times at which you're not moving at all for instance of time. Acceleration, find out when you're not accelerating. Let's try that one. When is acceleration equal to zero? In that case, you take your 12t minus 30, Set that equal to zero. When's acceleration equal to zero? If we add 30 and divide by 12, we get what? Five and a half. So two and a half. Right, five halves? Yeah, five halves. Two and a half seconds. Two and a half seconds. So at two and a half seconds, our, our acceleration is zero. Uh, what happens is we either temporarily stop accelerating for a second and continue, or we change our velocity from increasing to decreasing. Something happens with our velocity there, most likely. That's what happens. Um, we'll talk about our velocity could change from increasing at an increasing rate to increasing at a decreasing rate. One of those things happen. We're going to get more into what hap the interplay between first and second derivative in, I think it's chapter 3, where we're actually going to be graphing these using this information. For right now, do you understand the the position, then the velocity, then the acceleration, then the jerk. You find those different things about it? Yes or no? Okay. Yeah, there's only a couple more I really want to talk about. Uh, one of them is fireworks because it's so much fun. We can actually find things out about heights of objects that we shoot into the air. So let's talk a real quick example about some fireworks. <coughs> For this particular firework, this is the, the model of its height. 